Let's take a look at com combined applications. Yeah, let's look at our first problem. So we're given a fraction. And the fraction is one fourth. Boy, I can't write this morning. <coughs> Okay, we want to put it in the decimal. We want to put it in the ratio in percent. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, ratio is easy. Uh, that's in fraction form. We just uh, put one to four like that. Now for decimal, we'll take four and divide it into one. Remember the decimal goes straight up from where it's at. Uh, 4 goes in 10 2 times. 2 times 4 is 8. 10 minus 8 is 2. We add another 0, add another 0 here. And 4 goes in 25 times. Uh, 5 times 4 is 20. And subtract that when you get 0. So our decimal would be 0.25. Now percent. Uh, if you got it in decimal form, to change it to percent, you move your decimal point two places to the right. So this would be... 25 <coughs> percent. Excuse me. I think I got a cold or something. Okay, let's look at our fraction. And we'll look at our decimal. We'll look at our ratio. And we'll look at our percent form. And this one's 3 eighths. Now this one does say uh, round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. Oh, well, ratio is easy. That'd be 3 to 8. Let's look at our decimal. So, divide 3 by 8. Yeah, put on a decimal and a 0. Here's where our decimal point goes. And 8 goes in 30 um, 3 times. 3 times 8 is 24. Subtract that, we get 6. We add a 0 here, add a 0 here. That goes into that 7 times. It gives us 56, subtract those, 4, add a 0, add a 0 here, and that goes into that 5 times. <coughs> and 5 times 8 is 40, and subtract that, we get 0. So that's our decimal, but it does say to round to the nearest hundredth. Well, this is a tenths place, this is a hundredths place. Uh, since it's 0 0.375, the digit to the right of the hundredths is 5 or greater, so it means we'll round up. So this will be 0.38. Now, um, it says round to the nearest hundredth, but it doesn't say in which one. So I'm also going to round to the nearest hundredth here, but after I do the percent, I move my decimal two places to the right, and this would be 37.5. So I don't need to do any rounding here, because this ends in the tenths place. And that's 37.5%. <coughs> Let's look at our next one. Got two thirds. Got a fraction. Got a decimal. Got a ratio. Then we got a percent. And this would be two to three. Now for a decimal. Um, add a zero. Uh, three goes in twenty six times. Six times three is eighteen. Subtract that. Uh, 3 goes in 26 times. 18. You see the pattern, don't you? So it keeps going, it keeps going on like that. Forever. Okay, decimal. Um, round to the hundredths. Well, the hundredths, uh, here's tenths, here's hundredths, and digit to the right of it is 5 or greater, so we're going to round up. So this will be 0 0.67. To change it to percent, we move our decimal point two places to the right. So this would be 66.67 percent. <coughs> and those would be your answers. And let me save that.
There we go. Let's start a new page. And let's look at our next problem. We got our fraction, got our des decimal ratio in percent. And this time they gave us a decimal. 0 0.28. Okay. Now, percent's probably easiest. Because if you give it a decimal, you just move two the de the decimal two places to the right, and this becomes 28 percent. Now ratio, uh, ratio and fraction kind of go hand in hand. Um, they're just different forms. Now for our fraction, the 0.28 since this ends in the hundreds place, remember we put the uh, number 28 over the place it ends in. Ends in the hundreds place, we put over 100. Now this simplifies. Uh, top and bottom both divisible by um, at least 4. 20 divided by 4 is 7. 100 divided by 4 is 25. So we've got 7 25ths. And this would be 7 to 25. Now I'm assuming in the book they don't want those um, left in the unreduced form. Uh, let me look real quick. <coughs> hmm. I'm just wondering why they're asking for um, both the ratio and the fraction. If it's pretty much the same thing. Um, looks like it's for mixed numbers. Mixed numbers aren't exactly the same thing. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. <coughs> Let's take a look at our next problem. A fraction, decimal, ratio, and percent. And we're given a ratio here. 3 to 5. Well, fraction-wise, that'd be 3 fifths. Now, um, af if we have the fraction, we can easily get the decimal. So I'm going to divide 3 by 5. So add a decimal, 0. Uh, 5 goes in 36 times. 6 times 5 is 30. Like that. So this becomes 0 0.6. Now to go from decimal to percent, we need to move our decimal point two places to the right. Now there's nothing here, so I add on a 0. So this would become 60%. Mm -hmm. Number 6. Fraction, fraction, decimal, ratio, and percent. They're giving us 20.5 percent. Well, if they give us the percent, I just have to move a decimal two places to the left, and this would be normally be uh, 0 0.205. But since we're rounding to the hundreds place, which is right here, we look to the digit immediately to the right, which is five or greater, so this becomes 0 0.21. <coughs> Now, typically, you don't like to uh, round in the middle of a problem. So, if I'm at, uh, trying to get fraction, I'm not going to use 21 over 100. I'm going to go with this one over here. Um, when I say with this one over here, I'm, I'm talking not the percent, but this right here. So, we'll, for our fraction, we're going to take 205 and put it over 1,000, since it ends in the thousands place. Uh, this reduces. Top and bottom both is visible by at least 5. So that gives us 41 over 200. And I don't think that reduces any. So this would be 41 over 200. And this would be 41 colon 200. <coughs> I hate being sick. Okay, so this is eight and one fifth percent. Um, now, when I um, when I change this to decimal, or um, yeah, to decimal fraction, and so forth. But anyway, when I move the, my decimal two places left, I'm basically dividing by a hundred. So when we get some kind of weird fraction like this, eight and one fifth, when I want to change that from percent to decimal. 
Well, I just divide by 100. Well, this is a mixed number, so I take uh, 8 times uh, 5 is 40, plus 1 is 41 over 5. And we never actually divide uh, um, fractions. We immediately rewrite multiplication. And we do that by flipping a second fraction. But this isn't a fraction, but I can make it one by putting it as 100 over 1. So then we got 41 this times 1 over 100, which would give us uh, nothing simplifies there, I don't see. 41 times 1 is 41. 5 times 100 is 500. <coughs> now this is already in fraction form. And since this won't simplify, uh, that's this right here. So 41 over 500. Then this would be 41 colon 500. Now to get our decimal. Okay, so I put 41 here. Here's where a decimal point would be, so I put one right above it. I add a zero. 500 doesn't go in 410, so I just put a zero there and I add another zero. That goes into that eight times, I think. So that gives us 4,000. Subtract that. Add another zero on, and that goes in that two times. And then that gives us zero. So our decimal rounded to uh, the hundreds place, which is right here. So I look the digit to the right, and it's less than 5, so I round down. This would be 0 0.08. <coughs> and those would be your answers. Next page, I, I pretty well stole it out of the book. And uh, when you're working these problems, just uh, have this page open, be referring to it. Uh, they give you this um, uh, approximate equivalents and, and so forth. And they want to do some conversions. Now they imply they want you to use proportions for it, um, but we're going to use dimensional analysis because I like that better. And you may have to use some of those techniques you saw up above. Um, where you put in di different uh, forms. Now if I get a decimal, what I'm going to do is I'm going to not only put it in decimal form, but I'll put it in a fraction form also. Okay, so let's look at our first one. We got 1500 milliliters, and we want to change them to pints. So 1500 milliliters, and we want to convert that. I'll put that over one, and um, then we're changing it to pints. What I want is, well, what I have to have is this is milliliters up here. So we have to have milliliters up here. But what I would like is I'd like to put pints up on top. So I'm looking for some kind of tie between milliliters and pints. Now if I come over here, uh, here's a pint. One pint is two cups. Nope. Uh, blah, 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 blah. One pint is 500 milliliters. Yep, that's a tie, isn't it? So one pint is 500 milliliters, which means I'll put 500 down here, and I'll put one pint up there. Well, dimensional analysis. Uh, the way it works out is we've got milliliters up here, milliliters there, they cancel. And we got 1,500 over 500 pints, which would give us, uh, let's cancel, goes in that three times. So our answer would be three pints. <coughs> okay, on this one, we're going to want to go from 25 kilograms to pounds. I think that's kg for kilograms. Again, what we're starting with, you always put over one. And if kilograms up here, kilograms has to be down here. And I'm hoping that I can find some kind of tie between kilograms and pounds. I think all these first ones you'll be able to find that. And then the, the later ones, you'll have to actually have like a couple of different steps in there. Okay, so let's go up. I'm looking for a tie between pounds and kilograms. <coughs> Here it is. One kilogram is 2.2 .2 pounds. So one kilogram is 2.2 .2 pounds. Well, the kilograms cancel there. And um, 25 times 2.2, .2, I'm not going to do those by hand. 
It's equal to 55 pounds. And that's your answer. Right. Well, let's look at the next one. We've got 30 inches, and we want to convert it to centimeters. So, again, I put my 30 inches up here. Always put it over 1. If inches is it right here, we have to have inches here, there's no doubt. And we're looking for some kind of tie between inches and centimeters. So I'm hoping I can find something that ties these two together. So let's go up here and look. Inches and centimeters. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. So one inch is 2.54 centimeters. <coughs> well, the inch cancels this inch. And uh, 30 times 2.54 gives us 76.2 centimeters. Okay, now I'm gonna, I told you I'd, I'd show it in decimal form and in fraction form so you can see, see it. Um, this is like 76 plus um, 2 over 10 centimeters reason why I get that is uh, that this is 76 plus 0.2 and uh, the 2 ends in the tenths place. I put 2 over 10 which would give us 76 plus 1 fifth centimeters which gives us 76 and 1 fifth centimeters. Now decimal is what to use for, for metric but uh, that's how you'd uh, change that to a fraction form. <coughs> Eleven. Okay, we got um, blank milliliters equals eight teaspoons. So we're starting with eight teaspoons. Put over one. If teaspoons is up here, we have to have teaspoons down here. And I'm hoping to find some kind of tie between teaspoons and milliliters. So let's go look at our table. <coughs> teaspoons. One teaspoon is five milliliters. Well, there's a tie. So it's five milliliters and one teaspoon. Now teaspoons cancel. Eight times five is 40, so that gives us 40 milliliters. Okay, let's look at number 12. <coughs> Says use the provide table system conversion. Blank ounces equal to 150 milliliters. Okay, so we're starting with 150 milliliters. I'll put that over one. Uh, dimensional analysis: if this is milliliters, this has to be milliliters. And we hope to some find some kind of tie between that and ounces. So let's go back up there and look. <coughs> Okay, milliliters and ounces. Milliliters. There's one. Fluid ounce, one fluid ounce is 30 milliliters. Now notice how the ones after that, on some of the units of measure, you put the um, whatever you're dealing with first and then the number. Now I'll be sloppy about that, um, but r realize that it does make a difference. Not really in terms of showing you dimensional analysis though. So one, one ounce is equal to 30 milliliters. Well, the milliliters cancel there. 150 divided by 30 gives us 5, so we'd have 5 ounces. <coughs> 13. 50.8 centimeters equals blank inches. So we're starting with centimeters, so 50.8 centimeters. Now put it over one. If that's centimeters up there, this has got to be centimeters here, and uh, we're hoping to convert it to inches. So let's go look. See if there's some kind of tie between inches and centimeters. And we already used that, so I think it's over here on the left side somewhere. There it is. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. So one inch is 2.54 centimeters. I notice I say 2.5 or 2.54. A good um, 
a good rule to use is don't don't round to the very end. When you get done, write your answer. That's when you can round. So don't go with 2.5. Use it with 2.54. Okay, so the centimeter is going to cancel. And I got 50.8 divided by 2.54, which gives us 20. So that becomes 20 inches. Dimensional analysis is so simple once it clicks with you because you don't have to worry about what do I do, multiply or divide, it drives it, what the problem looks like. Mm. Let's look at number 14. <coughs> Okay, we got uh, blank ounces equal to two and one quarter pints. So I'm starting out with two and one quarter pints. Put that over one. If pints is up here, then pints has to be down here. And uh, we hope to convert that to ounces. And look right. Let's try it again. OU. I guess it was. So let's go look on our table. Uh, pints to ounces. <coughs> One pint is um, 16 fluid ounces. So 16 ounces is one pint. Okay. Now the uh, pint's going to cancel here. <coughs> and we got 2 and 1 fourth times 16 ounces. Now, um, if we're going to multiply these together, I want to put them both in fraction form. Uh, this is a mixed number form, so I'll take 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, so this becomes 9 fourths, times 16 over 1 ounces. Well, the 4 and 16, both of us by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 16 divided by 4 is 4. 9 times 4 is 36, so we've got 36 ounces. <coughs> Let's look at number 15. Uh, blank quartz is equal to 23 liters. So we're starting out with 23 liters over 1. And then uh, we've got liters here, so we have to have liters here. That's the way dimension analysis says. And we like to find some kind of tie between liters and quartz. Yeah, I think that's QTS. Hopefully. <coughs> Let's see what we got. Something ties liters and quarts. Liters is a quart. It says one quart is one liter. Okay, well that's easy. One liter is one quart. <coughs> so liters cancel here. And then 23 times 1 is 23 quarts. Yeah, let me save that. Sixteen. <coughs> Says so use a well same instructions. Blank teaspoon is equal twenty point five milliliters. Okay, so we got twenty point five milliliters. Now put it over one, and milliliters up here, so milliliters has to be down here. And we're hoping to sign, find some kind of tie between milliliters and teaspoons. Now let's go look. Milliliters and teaspoons. One teaspoon is five milliliters. There it is. So one teaspoon is five milliliters. Well, our milliliters cancel. And 20.5 divided by five gives us 4.1. 4.1 teaspoons. Now, again, I want to show you the fraction form. This is like four plus 0.1 teaspoons. The 0.1 ends in the tenths place, so this would be 1 over 10. 
which would give us four and one tenth teaspoon. The reason why they looked at those first problems <coughs> is because some problems you may have to put into percent, some you may have to put into um, fraction, some you may have to put into decimal, and uh, they just want to give you practice. So number 17. Let's see, blank cubic centimeters is equal to 30 teaspoons. And if that's teaspoons up here, then this has to be teaspoons here. And we're wanting to convert to cubic centimeters, cc's. So let's see if we have some kind of tie between te teaspoon and cc's. Let's just look for cc's. That's probably an easier one to find. Here's a cc. Nothing. Just this one. So one cubic centimeter is one milliliter. Well, um, I have a tie here, so the question becomes, can I put this in terms of milliliters? So let's try to do that. Milliliters and teaspoons. Well, we got that right up here. One teaspoon is five milliliters. So one teaspoon is five milliliters. And that's not exactly in cc's yet, but if I got milliliters here, we put milliliters here, and we try to find some kind of tie between milliliters and cc's. Well, down here, we said one cubic centimeter is one milliliter. So we definitely found one. One milliliter is one cc. <coughs> This is one, if we use dimensional analysis, we have to use two fractions. Uh, teaspoons cancel. Milliliters cancel. And we've got 30 times 5 is 150 times 1 is 150. 150 cc's. And that would be our answer. Let's look at number 18. Two medicine cups is equal to one teaspoon. Okay, so we got two medicine cups. Put that over one. And if that's what we're starting with, then um, medicine cups is up here. Medicine cups has to be down here. And I'm looking for some kind of tie between medicine cups and teaspoons. But there isn't any. It says I can put medicine cups in terms of fluid ounces or milliliters milliliters. We just looked at a problem that said like one teaspoon is five milliliters. So let's put this in terms of milliliters. So one medicine cup is 30 milliliters. So one medicine cup is 30 milliliters. Now if we put milliliters up here, we have to put milliliters down here. And we're converting this to teaspoons. So I'm hoping to find some kind of tie between milliliters and teaspoon. If I remember correctly, Uh, one teaspoon is five milliliters. Yep. So one teaspoon is five milliliters. Now medicine cups cancels that medicine cups. The milliliters cancels that milliliters. Up on top we got two times thirty is sixty times one is sixty. Down below one times one times five is five teaspoons. Which gives us some um, what twelve? Twelve teaspoons. <laughs> That's our answer. Let's look at our next problem. 19. Five and a quarter pints. And that's what we're starting with, so I put over one. And if that's pints up here, then we have to have pints down here. And where we're headed is ounces. So that's why I want to convert it to. So I'm going to look to see if there's some kind of tie between pints and ounces. So let's go up there and look. Pints and ounces. Pints. One pint is 16 fluid ounces. Ah, uh, we do have, have a tie. So one pint, what did I say? One pint is 16 fluid ounces. <laughs> Well, the pint's going to cancel there. Then we have 5 and 1 fourth times 16. 
ounces. Now I'm going to change the both these to fraction form. From multiply fractions, they both should be fractions. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 1 is 21. So 21 over 4 times 16 over 1 ounces. 4 and 16 both divisible by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 16 divided by 4 is 4. 21 times 4 gives us 84. So we'd have 84 ounces. And that'd be our answer. <coughs> Take a look at number 20. Two cups, and we want to change it to teaspoons. So I'm starting with cups. So I'll put that over one. And if that's cups here, it automatically has to be cups here. And we want to eventually get to teaspoons. That's where we're headed. Well, let's go see if we can find some kind of tie between cups and teaspoon. I'm pretty sure there isn't. <laughs> cup, cup. One cup is 250 milliliters, or 8 fluid ounces. Well, that doesn't tie it. Here's a, t here's a two cups, one pint. That doesn't help us. Two cups is one pint. One cup is 8 ounces. That doesn't help us. Okay. Well, I can change it to milliliters or I can change it to ounces. You have to kind of choose which one do you think might be a good one to go with. Um, I'm going to... Um, that's interesting. They have one cup is eight fluid ounces here and one cup is eight ounces over here. They have it twice. But anyway, let me try to change it to milliliters. The reason why I choose milliliters, milliliters is all over the place. So that's a, that's a really good one to pick. Um... So what I say? One cup is two fi 250 milliliters, so I can convert this to milliliters. Like that. Now, way dimensional analysis work is if milliliters is up here, milliliters has to be down here. And I think there is a tie between milliliters and teaspoon. Right up here, one teaspoon is five milliliters. So one teaspoon is five milliliters. <coughs> well, cups cancels the cups. Milliliters cancels with milliliters, and we're left with teaspoons, which is what we're wanting. Uh, 2 times 250 is 500 over 5 teaspoons, which gives us 100 teaspoons. Now I'm making these numbers up, so don't assume that we need to give a patient 100 teaspoons. And we save this. I'm starting to feel better. I think math's healing me. So now let's take a look at 21. Okay, so we're starting with three pints. We want to change it to tablespoons. So I'm starting with three pints. I'll put that over one. Now if that's pints there, then uh, down here we have to have pints. That's the way it always works. And we want to change the tablespoons. Hopefully that's abbreviation for tablespoons. Um, let's go up here. Ideally, we would like to find some kind of tie between pints and tablespoons. Pints, pints, pints. One pint, 500 milliliters, two cups, 16 fluid ounces, nope. Pint, pint. One pint is two cups, nope. Hmm. I don't see anything. Um, now here, we got one pint is 500 milliliters. We could use that. One pint is 500 milliliters. And again, uh, changing it to milliliters is a good a good idea because you have so many milliliters in your formulas here. Okay, if that's milliliters here, this has to be milliliters down here. And I'm hoping to find some kind of tie between milliliters and tablespoons. <laughs> One tablespoon is three teaspoons, hmm. and one teaspoon is five milliliters. That might work right there, but let's keep looking. Uh, looking for some kind of tie between tablespoons. Two tablespoons of one fluid ounce. Nope. One tablespoon is three teaspoons. Oh, that's interesting. Got up here too. Don't see it anywhere. 
Well, the best looks like I can do, I don't want to change it to ounces. I'm going to take the one tablespoon and change it to three teaspoons. Whoops, uh, sorry, I go backwards. One teaspoon is five milliliter. So this would be one teaspoon is five milliliters. Now, if teaspoons is right here, then teaspoons has to be right here. And we said that one tablespoon is three teaspoons. Like that. And we got to tablespoons. See how the flow goes. Pints, pints, milliliters, milliliters, teaspoon, teaspoon. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky. Um, and to be honest, the dimensional analysis makes it so easy because of the setup like that. Trying to do some proportions, I probably get, wouldn't get it right myself. I'd recommend dimensional analysis. Pints cancel there. Milliliters cancels here. Teaspoons cancels here. Well, we'll multiply all the numbers together on top. 3 times 500 is 1,500, times 1 times 1 is still 1,500. Down below, 1 times 1 is 1, times 5 is 5, times 3 is 15. And 1,500 divided by 15 gives us 100 tablespoons. And that would be our answer. And let's look at number 22. <coughs> 25 tablespoons, put that over 1, and if that's tablespoons here, we have to have tablespoons here, and we want to get to cc's, that's where we're headed. So let's go look at our table. I think cc's, we only have one place, so it makes it a lot easier. cc's is only right here, it's one milliliter, which means if I were to go backwards here, uh, this would have the next step over would have to be milliliter. Well, uh, the question is, do we have a tie between tablespoon and milliliter? And we don't. We saw that in a previous problem, but we do have a tie from tablespoon to teaspoon. So let's do that. So three teaspoons is one tablespoon. And again, dimensional analysis: if this is teaspoons here, we have to have teaspoons here. And um, we said uh, there's a tie between teaspoons and milliliters right here. One teaspoon is five milliliters. So one teaspoon, five milliliters. And then there's a tie between milliliters. Again, milliliters is here. Milliliters has to be here. There's a tie between milliliters and cc's. One cubic centimeter is one milliliter. So one to one, like that. And that's our that's our setup. Again, tablespoons, tablespoons, teaspoons, teaspoons, milliliters, milliliters, and then we got to cc. Now those tablespoons cancel, the teaspoons cancel, the milliliters cancel, and let's multiply our top parts together. Um, 20, let's see, 25 times 3 is 75, but times 5 I'm not sure about. 375. Bottom parts are all 1, so those go away. So we got 300 and 5, 375 cc's. <laughs> Let's look at number 23. Uh, blank ounces equal to 120 teaspoons. Okay, so we're starting out with 120 teaspoons. If that's teaspoons, this has to be teaspoons here. And we want to end up with our ounces. Yeah, let's go up and look. I don't think there's any kind of tie between uh, teaspoons and ounces. But let's check. Teaspoons. Teaspoons and tablespoons. Well, I got two options I could go with. I could change teaspoons to tablespoons right here. Or I could change teaspoons to milliliters. Well, uh, well, there's not a whole lot of tablespoons on this table. Oops, I'm lying to you. Here's two tablespoons is equal to one fluid ounce. That would get me to my ounces, wouldn't it? So actually, that would be the better way to go. So we want to convert uh, teaspoons to tablespoons. So three teaspoons is equal to one tablespoon. And this is tablespoons here, so I'll put tablespoons here. And um, over here, we said that um, 
two tablespoons is one fluid ounce. So two tablespoons is one fluid ounce. Okay, so our teaspoons cancel here. Our tablespoons cancel here. 120 times 1 times 1 is 120. 3 times 2 is 6 ounces, which gives us 20 ounces. And that's our answer. <laughs> These are kind of fun, uh, actually. If you're sitting here looking at one of these and you're just like, well, how, wh what path do I go? I can't figure this out. Dive in. Um, it, you know, there's not a whole lot of choices you can do. Um, you know, go from teaspoons and try to go to teaspoons and tablespoons. If this doesn't work, then go the other route. Change from teaspoons to milliliters. See if you can get there. Okay, so this says we're going to take two and a half ounces. Two and a half, yeah. And want to convert something. So that's ounces there. So this has to be ounces here. And it'd be beautiful if we had a uh, tie between ounces and teaspoons. I don't think we do. I think we just talked about how there's a tie between tablespoons and ounces. Is that right? Two tablespoons is one fluid ounce. Okay. So we can definitely change the ounces to tablespoons. I didn't write down where we're headed. We're headed to see teaspoons. That's where we want to end up at. Okay. Well, I just said that we can tie ounces to tablespoons. Right here. One fluid ounce is two tablespoons. Dimensional analysis. This is tablespoons. This has to be tablespoons. And we got a tie between teaspoons and tablespoons. Three teaspoons is equal to one tablespoon. Ounces, ounces, tablespoon, tablespoon, and we end up with a teaspoon. So those ounces cancel. The tablespoons cancel here. And we got um, two and one half times, two times three is six, teaspoons. Well, let's convert this to uh, both of them to fractions. Two times two is four plus one is five. So we got five halves times six over one. Teaspoons. Two and six both divisible by two. It gives me one there. It gives me a three here. Then five times three gives me fifteen teaspoons. And that's our answer. And I think that's the last problem. Now I've worked quite a few of those, um, just so you can see a lot of different examples of uh, dimensional analysis. There's one um, nursing math book I have that. Um, all they use throughout the entire book is dimensional analysis. Now that's a little bit extreme. There's some other cases where some of the other methods um, come in handy, but definitely dimensional analysis is one of the more powerful tools you can use if you're going into nursing. So let me go ahead and stop the recorder here.